First tonight at 10, things getting heated as a local town fights to take back their ambulance service. Plus, lock your doors. Another call from police, this time after a Madison car theft is captured on surveillance video. And later, action is taken against a fraternity at UW-Madison after video shows a woman nearly being killed at a party. This is News 3 at 10. First tonight, a developing story along the Beltline. One lane is still closed after an incident at the intersection of West Broadway. According to the Wisconsin State Patrol, a pedestrian was hit by a car around 745 tonight. All of the westbound lanes were closed for more than a half hour while first responders arrived. No word on how it happened or the condition of the person involved. We will have the latest as it becomes available on channel3000.com. Former volunteers were turned away tonight by members of the Rural Medical Board. The volunteers said they would get a meeting with the executive board of the nonprofit ambulance service, but tonight things got heated. Amy Reed joins us now to tell us what's going on there. Amy? You might remember this from last week, a group of small towns buying into a nonprofit many don't believe is working anymore. The former volunteers are trying to change that, but when they brought forward the proposal tonight, things didn't turn out exactly as they'd hoped. They want to get the situation fixed. You don't want to hear it, and you yeah. don't want. That's all we this. come for. The chair of rural medical flips the light on the meeting he said never happened. They had a meeting scheduled. That's why we're here. We were here to support um, the the guys. The former volunteers gathered outside. They said they were told to bring copies of a proposal they wrote. It recommends a change in the bylaws of the nonprofit that would make it so the volunteers run the organization. A small group of the Rural Medical Board took the proposal but refused to meet any further, implying too many people showed up and this meeting was supposed to be off the record. Did we or did we not ask you to bring one or two representatives? On Tuesday, Darlington City Council voted four to three to give the board no Notice. The city, which makes up 48% of the funds for the nonprofit, is out. And that's the feedback we get from the residents that, you know, they want the volunteers to run the ambulance very much. Mayor David Brunig said the service has 18 months before the city officially withdraws. And if they change the bylaws and the volunteers do end up running things, the city's back in. You know, it just shows that people care. People care for the volunteers. They really do. The volunteers say this is a step in the right direction. They said they're tired of the disrespect, but they want to get back to what they love. Honestly, doing EMS is not something that you do just for the fun of it. <laughs> it takes a passion to do it. You deal with a lot of things, and we all just really want to go back to being EMTs and drivers and first responders for the community. That is all we really want to do. And we asked numerous times for a comment from Rural Medical, but they declined. Amy Reed reporting tonight. Amy, thank you. The UW chapter of the Kappa Sigma Fraternity House now suspended after a safety-related incident over the weekend. Two Instagram videos show a TV being thrown off the roof of the chapter house, narrowly missing a woman below. According to a release from the university, the interim suspension prevents the organization from holding any events, reserving space, or enjoying the other privileges that come with being a student organization. The police department says two 20-year-old fraternity members have been issued misdemeanor citations. The UW says the investigation should last the rest of the summer. A former state trooper, Frank Torres from Cambridge, will spend the next three years in prison. He was charged with 10 counts of possession of child pornography in February of last year. He pleaded guilty to half of those charges. Torres had been a state trooper since 1994, but resigned amid those allegations. Police are hoping the public can help identify a man involved in an armed robbery at a Madison gas station earlier this week. They say this man was holding a silver handgun when he robbed the Capitol Petro Mart on Verona Road early Sunday morning. Police believe he may be responsible for three other robberies at the same gas station in the past several months. Madison police are once again reminding people to close their garages and lock their doors. This vehicle theft was captured on surveillance video on Dorchester Way on the west side early this morning. The thief used the garage door opener from the car in the driveway to get inside the garage and steal a gray 2015 RAV4. Anyone with information on who this person is should call police. The second tropical storm of the year has formed in the Atlantic. It's about 1,400 miles east of the Lesser Antilles. 
Caribbean islands. The National Hurricane Center estimates maximum sustained winds about 45 miles an hour, with the depression moving west at 16 miles an hour. Around here, things will be getting a little more comfortable in the weather department. After a muggy holiday, the humidity will finally be taking a break. Let's check in now. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield, he's in the weather center, Dave. Yeah, it's probably pretty humid in Tropical Storm Barrel right now, but not for us. Finally, we get a break from that humidity. Temperatures have fallen into the low 70s, and some 60s showing up closer to Viroqua and Boscobel across southern Wisconsin this evening. Dew points in the 50s. Oh, that feels so good outside. 58 in Madison, 55 in Janesville. Still some 60s closer to southwestern Wisconsin, but still much improved over the past couple of hours. Our dew point change for the last 24 hours, about 10 to 15 degrees less humid compared to this time yesterday. A live look in Madison on the WISC TV Skycam. Currently at 72 degrees, a north northwest wind at 5 miles per hour. Your day planner for tomorrow starting off near 60 degrees. Plenty of sunshine. Highs will make it into the low 80s. We'll talk about how long this nice weather will stick around in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. Allegations of abuse and a cover-up are part of a 110-page federal report into a local nursing home. A state and federal investigation began looking into Maplewood Nursing Home in Sauk City after a man living in the home, 69-year-old Galen Malish, was arrested for allegedly sexually assaulting multiple, multiple female residents. Malish is a registered sex offender. A Department of Health Services and Centers for Medicaid and Medicare investigation found the home to have violated nine federal rules. It shows that staff knew Malish was on the sex offender registry and that officials at Maplewood tried to prevent an investigation into his behavior. Maplewood told us today that they've submitted a plan to correct their violations. Dan County Medical Examiner has identified the man who died yesterday while in jail. They say 29-year-old James Bork of Beaverdam died early yesterday. He had recently been arrested on a tentative charge of fourth offense DWI. The medical examiner says the death does not appear to be suspicious. Madison police are releasing data showing June was projected to be the worst month ever for heroin deaths in Madison history. Last month there were 35 known heroin overdoses. At least 11 ended in death. Officers tell us they're seeing an increase of heroin laced with fentanyl and that could be partially to blame for that rise. On average, police and fire administering Narcan once a day just in Madison alone. This addiction is so powerful that they need to use immediately. So to drive back home and use there in the privacy of their home, that's not always the desire. It's just the nearest private location and many times that is a public restroom. Police are trying to get people struggling with drug abuse into recovery instead of putting them behind bars using the Madison Addiction Recovery Initiative, or MARI, program. Breaking tonight on the efforts to save a Thai youth soccer team from a flooded cave. There are reports from the Associated Press that a member of the rescue effort has died from lack of oxygen. The 12 children and one coach have been stuck in the cave for two weeks. A couple weeks ago, we told you about an historic bourbon distillery in Kentucky partially collapsing. This week, what was left standing also came down. Last month, about 9,000 barrels, each holding roughly 53 gallons of aging spirits, were affected in the collapse. Yesterday, the second half of the building came down. In total, 20,000 barrels of aging liquor were kept in that building. No one was hurt in either collapse. The woman who climbed the Statue of Liberty yesterday has been charged with trespassing and interference with government agency functions. The 44-year-old climbed to the base of the statue in an apparent protest against President Trump's immigration policies. The incident caused the evacuation of Liberty Island. At least 19 people, including rescue workers, were killed in a fireworks explosion in the Mexican municipality of Tultepec today. It is the latest of a series of deadly blasts to hit the area that is known for its fireworks production. Officials at Johns Hopkins say there's no risk to the public after a small tuberculosis spill happened this morning. The executive vice dean there says a small frozen tuberculosis sample was dropped on a bridge between the buildings that do not connect to the hospital. Both research buildings were evacuated as a precaution. He said the size of the sample was the equivalent of a few drops. 
The U.S. Coast Guard is continuing its search for a missing fisherman on Lake Michigan. Officials say a 38-year-old man left the Kiwani Marina by himself around 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon and was due back at 9.30. A helicopter found the vessel beached on shore early today. The Sheriff's Department says nobody was aboard the boat. In political headlines today, Environmental Protection Chief Scott Pruitt has resigned, brought down by months of scandals. President Trump made the announcement in a tweet saying he has accepted accepted Pruitt's resignation. He had been engulfed in alleged scandals for months. Pruitt said in his resignation letter, the unrelenting attacks on me personally, my family are unprecedented and have taken a sizable toll on all of us. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in Japan tonight. He will be meeting with North Korea to continue negotiations on denuclearization. He departed Joint Base Andrews early this morning. It's his first visit to Pyongyang since last month's historic summit between the president and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore. U.S. tariffs on $34 billion of Chinese imports are scheduled to take effect tomorrow. Beijing says it will retaliate, imposing tariffs on an equivalent value of U.S. goods, including soybeans, seafood, and crude oil. Longtime radio and TV commentator Ed Schultz has died at his home. Schultz started his career as a sportscaster in Fargo before working as a commentator at MSNBC. Schultz used his show, The Edge Show, to drum up opposition to Governor Walker's Act 10 initiative in 2011 and then support for the recall effort of Walker in 2012 and often broadcasting live from here in Madison. Ed Schultz is said to have died of natural causes. He was 64 years old. Still to come tonight, the humidity finally takes a break. Your weekend forecast is straight ahead. But first, preserving a piece of Madison history, what is next for the iconic Ella's Deli Carousel? That is next at 10. Welcome back. Seattle became the first major city to put a ban on plastic straws earlier this week. Other cities are starting to follow their lead, 
including here in Madison. Well, we spoke today with Vintage Brewing Company, who is coming up on its first year of not having plastic straws. They say it's gone well and has greatly reduced the amount of waste there. They still do offer straw alternatives, though through 100% compostable and biodegradable straws to their customers. They say it is one of the most eco-friendly decisions they've made. Uh, the dollar was worth it for us um, to a, let the community know that we're just trying to do our part and um, litter as, as least as possible. He also added that in an industry where there is a lot of waste at the end of each day, getting rid of plastic in any way they can is a step in the right direction. Starting Monday, the American Red Cross will institute a blood emergency. That means that more blood is being used than is being donated, which can have consequences, including doctors being forced to delay surgeries. Officials say that they are about 15,000 donations behind. The annual Farm Technology Days is about to start this year up in Wood County. The three-day event starting next Tuesday, July 10th, features some of the most advanced and modern tech in the agricultural industry. Organizers of this year's event in Marshfield say the show will cost about $2 million to put on. Epic has purchased the carousel and the decoration collection for Madison's historic Ella's Deli, a deli which was a staple on the east side for decades, closed back in January. An Epic administrator says helping preserve a part of the Madison landmark was an easy decision. The company believes it will take, though, until later this month to move all of those items. A new brew house opened for business at East Town Mall. It opened this evening. The company says it features its own microbrewery and movie theater. According to a release, Flix is the first theater in the world to incorporate a fully functioning microbrewery in Madison is the company's sixth location, the first in the state of Wisconsin. The theater takes up more than 39,000 square feet of East Town Mall. Here's an unusual story out of Green Bay. A pet parrot was rescued thanks to the police and fire department. Yesterday afternoon, the bird escaped from a home on Oneida Street and flew to the top of a tree. The fire department brought in their ladder truck and allowed the bird's owner to go up with one of the firefighters. Fortunately, the owner was able to pull his parrot into his arms and bring him back down safely. It felt good to know that they were willing to help somebody in need, and I told them a thousand times I can't express how much I want to thank them for this. The bird, named Cece, was rescued just in time. A storm broke out just a few minutes after he was brought down from the tree. I bet he had a lot to say about that. Let's go to <laughs> Dave Caulfield with a look at a forecast that brings some comfort our way, Dave. Finally, an inside source, actually, with that story tells me <laughs> the bird was trying to escape the humidity, and that's a tropical bird, <laughs> keep in mind. So that's just a sense of how that bad. That says something. I know, bad, right? Dave. That, that, there's your sign, as a famous comedian <laughs> would say. However, we are looking at much nicer conditions tonight and into the weekend we can thank a cold front that went through earlier on this Thursday and also high pressure that is general uh, what's the word I'm looking for building there we go um, we'll we'll get it together folks building across the area and that is bringing cooler and drier air into town maybe a little bit mild in spots still but that will go away as we head into tomorrow really nice conditions across the great state of Wisconsin. We're looking at dew points finally back into the 50s. That's the air that's comfortable outside. That's the air when you step outside your door, you can breathe a sigh of relief that the humidity is taking a bit of a hiatus for the next three or so days. Doppler track showing any showers or storms well to our south and they're not coming back over the next three days at least and even in two portions of really next week. I think Doppler track is going to remain quiet so we get a break from the humidity and kind of related. We do get a break from the thunderstorm and shower chances as well. Temperatures right now in the 70s. Also a few 60s showing up. Look at this in Camp Douglas already down to 62, 72 in Madison, 75 still in Janesville. Dew points in the 50s and 60s much, much more comfortable across the area. 58 in Madison. That feels great outside right now. 64 a little bit more humid as we head into southwestern Wisconsin. But I think that will even get better over the next few hours. Look at this 24 hour dew point change about 10 to 15 degrees less humid across the area compared to this time on Wednesday. Hopefully that humidity stays away for quite some time. Downtown Madison on the Edgewater sky cam looking at mostly clear skies really save a few clouds here and there over the next few days. High pressure is going to deflect all the bad stuff away. Tell the high pressure system what you want to deflect and hopefully it can get it out of here. If you maybe got a bad grade on a test when you were way younger, tell the high pressure system. Hopefully it will help you out. 88 the high today.
about five degrees above normal. High temperature trend over the next week or so looking warmer and more humid as we head into next week. 8 to 14 day temperature outlook as we head into the middle of this month. Pretty typical July weather looks to visit us across much of the U.S., including Wisconsin, so a little bit warmer, maybe a little bit drier than what we have experienced. Tonight becoming mostly clear, cooler and less humid with temperatures in the 50s. Tomorrow highs will make it into the low 80s, less humid again as we head into tomorrow. So really not looking at too much. Pretty quiet on future track over the next couple of days. Highs should make it right to about 80 degrees as we head into Friday and Saturday. Sunday, a couple more clouds may come our way and then also maybe temperatures a little bit warmer as we head into Sunday and then that warm and humid weather does come back as we head into Monday. Heat index values will be in the mid to upper 90s as we head into next week once again. So enjoy the next couple of days while we can. That break from the humidity does not last forever, unfortunately. Looking forward to breathing once again. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Brewers try to keep it rolling against another first place team, the Braves, visiting Miller Park tonight. The highlights coming your way next in sports.
The Brewers are moving on from Eric Sogard. He was hitting 134 this season, so Sogard's designated for assignment, meaning he'll either be traded or released in the next 10 days. Tyler Saladino was activated. He started at shortstop for the Brewers tonight as they open a four-game series against another division leader, the Atlanta Braves at Miller Park. Some goofy plays in this one. The Brewers' Ulysse Chassin watches ball four go by, and boy, look at all the way to the backstop, comes back toward the plate, but... No matter, Saladino scores, and the Brewers have a 4-2 lead. And Chassin has another quality start on the mound for Milwaukee. Seven innings, three hits, one walk, seven strikeouts. He's now 7-3 and three this season. Aaron Perez adds an eighth-inning homer. Final score, Brewers 7, Braves 2. Brewers now a game and a half up on the idle Cubs atop the NL Central. Well, the Brewers are off to a great start this season. Now 52-35 and 35 is their record. They lead the Central Division, and they're in great shape for a run at a wild card if the Cubs somehow get hot in the second half like they did last year. You'd think the Brewers would certainly be buyers as the trading deadline approaches July 31st. David Stearns isn't saying anything for sure, and he says anything is possible. Clearly, when you're in the position that we're in right now, the goal is to improve the team if you can. Um, that can take a variety of different forms. It can mean... Um, some minor acquisitions. It can mean uh, a more robust acquisition. It could also mean um, improving the team from within. So we have to we have to be open to exploring all of those options. That's what we're doing right now, and it's a fun time of year for us. The Madison Mallards lose at home tonight, 10 to 2, to Battle Creek at Warner Park. The Mallards are 0 and 2 to start the second half of the Northwoods League season. They're at Kenosha tomorrow night. If you've been missing the World Cup, it returns tomorrow with the start of the quarterfinals. It starts at 9 o'clock Central with Uruguay and France. Then the afternoon game is Brazil and Belgium at 1. The other quarterfinals are Saturday, Sweden, England in the morning, and Russia, Croatia in the afternoon on Saturday at the World Cup, the World Cup final, Sunday, July 15th in Moscow. The LPGA is having an event at northeastern Wisconsin this week, the Thornberry Creek Classic in Oneida, Wisconsin. That's just outside of Green Bay. Australian Catherine Kirk won last year's event. She's off to a great start in this year's event. Kirk plays early, shoots 10 under 62, which ties the course record, and is her best round as a professional. She shot 7 under 29 in the back nine. It's just a one-shot lead, though, for Kirk, as Sui Young Kim shot 63. Brittany Marchand and Megan Kang shot 64 in the first round of the Thornberry Creek LPGA Classic outside of Green Bay. There was controversy at the Hot Dog Eating Championship yesterday. Joey Chestnut's original count was 64, but it was discovered two cleared plates of hot dogs were missed. Thus, the final total was 74 hot dogs eaten. And today, the president of Major League Eating says electronic counting technology may be added to assure an accurate real-time count of hot dogs eaten. Rich Shea is the president of MLE, that's Major League Eating. He says he doubts we can put a microchip on the tongue or in the esophagus. Perhaps some sort of monitoring with the plate weight would be more practical. Discuss among yourselves. We'll be right back.
Finally tonight, newlyweds in Ozaki County barely dodged a falling tree branch shortly after their I do's. Well, Cheyenne and Lucas were getting ready to be interviewed for their <gasps> wedding video. Look at that. Isn't that something? A massive tree branch came crashing down. They got out of the way with just a split oh second to spare. According to the photographer, the bride said after the incident, quote, our love is going to be stronger than that tree. Oh, God. So unreal. So. Unbelievable, man. Boy. Very fortunate. Love bears all things, endures all things. Yeah, oh. all Even tree things. branches. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have uh, some lower humidity on the way over the next couple of days. It's going to feel really nice across the area. Thanks for joining us. Do something good, and we'll see you tomorrow.